I guess we have to talk about this. Honestly, I don't really want to, but I kind of feel obligated to because I've been avoiding it and avoiding it and avoiding it. And everybody keeps talking about it. They won't shut up about it. So yeah, I'll, I'll pay some attention to this stupid women's soccer story. Cause I know that I'm going to be called a sexist for this. So I'm going to clear this up right now. I think women's soccer is boring as sin. I would rather watch paint dry than watch women's soccer. And I've been to a women's soccer match. If I hadn't been basically told by my fraternity brothers that I was going to go or face penalties from the fraternity, believe me, I would not have been there. So people were literally threatening me with fines, and that's the only way they got me to go to a women's soccer match. But here's the thing. I know that I'm going to be called a sexist for this at some point in the comment section. But I think men's soccer is boring as sin, too. It has nothing to do with the sex of the people on the on the field. It has everything to do with the sport being horrible, <laughs> horribly boring. I cannot stand watching it. But the whole thing about this is they're they're making some kind of big statement about equal pay and how the women are underpaid according to that. Well, I may find soccer boring, but I do like statistics and I do like numbers, especially economic numbers. And it turns out that the Men's World Cup made over $6 billion the last time it was going on. By contrast, the women's made $130 million. Wow. I mean, that's not even in the same, the same planet as how much the Men's World Cup. And I understand outside of America, it's a super popular, yeah, whatever, I don't care. It's a certain point you have to say scoreboard. And you would think being athletes, they would understand that. At a certain point, you have to say, if you want to make more money, then you need to be bringing in more money. It would be the same thing as if I walked into my program director, I walked into Joe's office, who, by the way, Sports Radio 740, the fallout, listen to him. Uh, if I walked into Joe's office and said, you know what, Joe, I am really angry that Rush Limbaugh makes so much more than I do. Now, granted, Rush isn't nearly as good as me, but he does have the numbers. Now, I'm playing. Rush is the godfather of radio for a reason. But if I walked in as like, look, Joe, he's on News Radio 1440. I'm on News Radio 1440. He's a talk show host. I'm a talk show host. Why am I making so much less than Rush Limbaugh? Rush Limbaugh's a millionaire. Why is he making so much more than me? Joe would look at me like I was crazy, first of all, and say, because he brings in more money than you. I mean, even if Rush wasn't a national host, even if he was just middays on News Radio 1440, the guy has better ratings than me. That's okay. I mean, the guy's, what, a 30-year veteran of the trade? That's fine. He's carried by hundreds of radio affiliates all over the country. Rush makes more money than me because he generates more money than me. More people want to buy ads on his show than they do on Tactics, and that's fine. Maybe in 30 years I'll be in the position he's in. I don't know. Kind of doubt it. Rush has a lot to live up to. But my point in all of that is, I'm not bitter about that, and I understand that the reason he makes more is because he generates more. That's fine. By the way, you talk about the disparity between the amount of money they make. Turns out, if you're looking at it statistically, in other words, a percentage of the share of the money that they're getting, turns out women are actually overpaid in soccer because you're looking at the uh, $6 billion that they made last time. The men got 13% or the, the men got 9% of that. The women, 13%. Now, 13% of $130 million is considerably less than 9% of 6 billion. But the point is women are actually making a larger percentage of the money that they're generating than the men are. And the women typically have contracts, whereas the men basically get paid in bonuses. And so their income is not only a higher percentage, but it's actually more stable and more, reli more reliable. And so this idea that she's complaining about being underpaid, this, the numbers actually show the opposite is true if you're looking at it based on how much they generate. They're actually keeping a larger chunk of the money that they make than the men are. But here's the thing, and, and maybe I've been guilty of this too. Maybe we're focusing just a little too much 
on where we disagree with one another, maybe we should focus on the points of agreement because there is actually a point where I agree with Megan Rapinoe. And so I'll go ahead and play that clip now. In the moments immediately following the final whistle, you get that USA, USA chant, but equal pay, equal pay along that same cadence. Yeah. I think fans want to know what they can do to support that fight. Fans can come to games. Um, obviously, the national team games will be a, a hot ticket. Um, but we have nine teams in the NWSL. You can go to your league games. Um, you can support that way. You can, um, you know, buy players jerseys. You can lend your support in that way. You can tell your friends about it. You can become season ticket holders. Um, I think in terms of, of that, that's the, the easiest way for, for fans to get involved. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Megan Rapinoe on uh, Rachel Maddow show, by the way, looking like a Democrat presidential candidate. I'm kind of surprised she didn't announce her candidacy last night. I mean, every other person on the left, there's like 900 candidates now. But nonetheless, I couldn't agree more. If people want to support women's soccer, then they should go to soccer games. They should buy the women's soccer merchandise. You want to support it? That's how. Which, by the way, by saying that, by saying that, well, the reason we don't have equal pay is because people aren't going to our games, that's the point that I just made. Megan Rapinoe just made my point for me. If the reason you have income inequality is because you're not generating nearly as much income and the remedy to that is people buying more tickets and spending more on jerseys, which, by the way, I'm fine with. I'm a free market guy. It's hilarious to me that her remedy to this is capitalism, which is, like I said, okay. If more people want to watch women's soccer games, they will go to more women's soccer games. That's how the market works. And if her fans are wanting her to make more money, they will spend more money on going to see her games. Now, they haven't done that so far, but here's the thing that I really do want to point out here, and I don't understand why anybody would pay any money to see any soccer game, but that's just me. It does basically undermine her own argument because she's saying that there's some kind of injustice going on that we're not paid equally. Well, the person deciding that is the fan. You're in an entertainment industry, just like I am. You, me, Jimmy Kimmel, uh, actors and actresses in movies, we all have different forms of entertainment, but it's all an entertainment industry. And ultimately, the thing that determines how much money we make is how much people want to watch us, how many people want to listen to us. And in her case, how many people want to see her kick a ball around for an hour. That's it. And if people do want to, they do want her to make more money. Now, granted, I don't feel a great deal of sympathy for her. She's a millionaire. But I don't feel a great deal of sympathy for her. But if her fans do and they want her to make more money, all they have to do is spend more money on soccer games. Now, here's the thing about that. They're saying that this is a, a thing that women need to do. When's the last time you remember a group of women, say, for a bachelorette party or just for a girl's night out? They're all sitting around and they say, you know what we should do? Go to a women's soccer game. It just doesn't happen. These women are not getting paid less because there's some kind of social injustice. It's that women don't support it. Let's think. Where is a medium that women actually do support and women in that industry actually make more money? Hmm. What about fashion models? Women pay a lot of money to fashion models. They usually do it indirectly, but they buy fashion magazines and they buy the clothes that models wear because they think, oh, look at, I don't even know any models. Uh, <laughs> I can't even come up with one name. But we'll use just Taylor Swift just because she's a famous person. They'll see on the cover of a magazine, wow, Taylor Swift looks amazing in that dress. I want to buy that dress so I can look like Taylor Swift, which is fine. But female models are paid way more than male models. Why? Because that's where women spend their money, spend their capital. And they do that and they support an industry that they are interested in. And because of that, in that particular industry that women support, female models make way more than male models. There is an income inequality in the modeling world, which is understandable. Because 
guys don't buy things based on that typically. When was the last time you saw a man see a really jacked, muscled up guy in an underwear ad and thought, okay, I need to go buy that underwear to look like that guy. We, we don't think that way. We walk into Walmart, we see a six pack of whatever our brand is, we throw it in, and that's the end of that. Women spend an awful lot of time and effort thinking about these things. Victoria's Secret models are paid a lot of money because they make the product look good and they move more of the product, and women pay an exorbitant amount of money for these things because there are attractive models that show the product off and make that product sell more. And so, really, the big difference in these two industries is that A, sports is a, an industry primarily frequented by men, and B, the women that do, they're not going to spend nearly as much money on it. Because in the industries where they do that, women are more successful. And so... You can couch it as some kind of social inequality, but the truth is women made that decision. Women are the ones that decided, we do want to support this, we don't want to support this, because we like this more than this on average. That's fine. That's the way a free market works. And Rappanow is exactly right. If, if her fans do want them to make just as much money as the men do, all they have to do is buy more jerseys and buy more tickets. That's it. <laughs> Hey, y'all know I'm a stats and numbers guy, so here's some fun facts for you. People that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel are 200% more satisfied with their online video content and 400% more likely to be able to speak intelligently about politics and religion with somebody they know. Also, four out of five people that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel live healthier, more fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, 82% of the statistics on the internet totally made up.